You know, understand that, yeah, this is your team, this is your offense, but rely on the weapons that you have and not try to go from the home run swing every single time. BYU is going to leave a day earlier to get ready for that earlier start on Saturday, so they'll fly out on Thursday. Here are the predictions. Blaine won it last week. We'll just move on after last week. <laughs> Here's what we expect on Saturday. Blaine. I think 48-21. I think UMass is explosive. They're going to throw it 60 times, but they're going to have a hard time stopping BYU. David? I think BYU puts up some points, 38 points. I think they only allow 14. I think the defense continues to get better each week. You know, two touchdowns. I give it to them. I, I, I think it's similar to Hawaii, and uh, I'm just trying to copy you a little bit, Dave. So there you go. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going 50 to 20. I think it all comes together finally for this BYU team. That's our show for tonight. For Blaine, David, Brian, and all of us at BYU TV Sports, I'm Dave McCann. BYU football with Kalani Sataki is next. We'll see you Saturday morning on Countdown and next Tuesday for more AFR. Coming up on BYU Football with Kalani Satake bouncing back after the Boise Blues, how the Cougars plan to turn things around against UMass. Yeah, the Blue Coats are coming to Boston, plus the Brothers L. Bakri. It's all next on BYU Football with Kalani Satake. <laughs> Goes deep down the near side. He's got Shumway in his. Caught what a grab! Talon Shumway! Quarterback draw. Zach Wilson! Touchdown, Cougars! This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, Spencer Linton. Welcome to our Tuesday night showcase in Studio C. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. We are live on BYU TV and BYU Radio featuring an all-access pass to review and preview the latest Cougar football storylines with the head coach. Remember, you can always join the conversation by submitting questions for all of tonight's guests on Twitter using hashtag Satake Show, as well as Facebook and Instagram on the BYU TV Sports accounts. Now for the main event and the reason you're all dialed in. In his third season at BYU, your head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Satake. <laughs> Coach, a trip to Boston and a matchup with UMass await this weekend, not to mention a shot at some retribution after what uh, the Minutemen did here in Provo last year. But let's start with BYU football as of today. Right now, November 6th, what's the vibe of your team coming off another hard-fought, albeit heartbreaking loss against Boise State on the blue? Well, I think the guys are just anxious to get back on the field and get this uh, sour taste out of our mouths. You know, we've had um, disheartening losses the last couple weeks, and that's never sits well with our guys, but I, I mean, uh, they, they've come to work on Monday and, and uh, just like they've done every week with a, with a great attitude. And so I, I'm honored to coach these guys and, and they have great attitudes and they're, they're willing to put forth the hard work. And um, we need to make sure that uh, we made some improvement from last week to this week. We just didn't finish the, the deal. It came down to one play and Boise made uh, one play more than we did. And uh, I, I like to think more about the other 59 seconds, uh, 59 minutes and you know, 50, what, four seconds, 53 seconds in the game that we could have controlled and maybe not have it come down to one, one play at the end of the game to win it. But um, we've had some close ones and we've lost some close ones. If we were able to uh, make the play, and it's a game of inches if we were to make the play and, the, and it's an odd ball, so it bounces differently, but um, that's just part of the game. And, and uh, just pleased with the, how hard our guys work and we got to keep working towards this. I, I see some progress, you know, obviously, like to learn lessons uh, and grow with wins, but um, this is one of those deals where we have to fight through the adversity, and our guys are giving us the effort, and so I'm looking forward to a great matchup on Saturday. All right, we'll get into some of those lessons that you learned from the Boise State film, and uh, let's relive some of that rivalry madness in highlight form, starting with a Boise State quick start. March down the field, they go up 7 nothing here on fourth and goal. Your team responds with Skyler Southam, and it's not often you're going to see him come up short on the field, but he's got a huge leg. Yeah, that was a, that was a, a shocker. I think he got underneath the ball too much, but it was on point. He just uh, kicked the laces and, and uh, didn't go far enough. This one worked out a little bit better for Skyler. You're on the board after being down 14-0 here with this 26-yard attempt, so it's 14-3. 
And then Michael Shelton comes up with one of the bigger defensive plays of the year, Coach. Yeah, and he has great instincts, and it's part of our coverage. We, we, we gave Rippin a bunch of different looks and confused him a little bit. Um, and then, you know, we're able to capitalize on in that play. I know you would have liked to have seven there, but Skyler Southam, to his credit, coming through again with another field goal. It's 14-6 into the third quarter. Then your defense really starts to turn things up, and they take advantage of another Boise State turnover right here. Yeah, and that, that's, uh, you know, I think we had two. We were able to get two, and they, we gave up three, but uh, the guys kept, but, kept fighting. How about Talon Shumway's catch? He's a guy that's coming on late in the season. Yeah, and, and I think he's been a really fa a favorite target for Zach. And, um, you know, Talon's got great ball skills, especially in the deep throw. That sets up BYU's touchdown to cut it to within one, 14-13 after the extra point. Boise State responds with their third and final touchdown, 21-13 late in the third quarter. And then this, to me, when I first saw it, I thought this is going to be the play of the year for BYU football. What happened right here at the goal line when the ball was stripped from Matt Bushman? Well, I think Matt was trying to, he made a great catch and um, just trying to make, trying to make a touchdown and, and trying really hard and uh, didn't, didn't cover up football well enough. Now, in spite of that, you get to within 21-16 and you get the ball back. You opt to punt, your defense does the job, you get the ball back and then the screen to Matt Hadley. Now, in your wildest, did you expect it to turn into this long of a game? Well, Matt has the ability, he has great vision. He, he can see down the field and sets up his blocks really well on that play and, and give us a chance to be down there for the win. Then the play that uh, everyone is talking about, seven seconds to go. Zach Wilson under some pressure, keeps it, goes down inside the five yard line. And unfortunately, BYU on the final play again comes up just short at Boise State by a final score of 21-16. Now, it would seem that every fan, and I mean every fan, has relived that play multiple times in their head, probably trying to will it or hope it to hmm. turn out differently. And I know that lessons learned in that moment are valuable. That doesn't make them any easier. But what are the lessons you want your guys to learn from that play? Well, I mean, just really proud of Zach. We wouldn't be in that position if he didn't make plays all night. And so, um, young freshman, and, and you know, we were in a position where I thought, um, you know, I think he, he felt like he could have made the play. We'd like to get two two plays out of that, but I don't really blame Zach. I blame myself for not taking the timeouts earlier. And, and not giving him more time to set up more plays. And so I, I look at the evaluation that I, I have to look as a head coach from the whole game. And uh, I think we, we made some mistakes as a team that, uh, that was really difficult to come back from, you know. And um, I'm just thankful that we had that opportunity and just didn't work out. But, you know, as a head coach, I probably need to give our guys more time and put them in a situation where it doesn't come down to that one play. And, um, that's, that's something that we have to keep evaluating and, and I need to do a better job at. Yeah, we saw a lot of good things in that highlight clip from your team. Good plays that were made and of course we couldn't capture all of those because this is only an hour long show. <laughs> so uh, we, we got to keep it concise to a degree. But uh, one thing that was disconcerting and, and you brought it up and Jeff Grimes has brought it up is giving up more sacks now. The first six games, I think it was six total. So one a game, really good. In fact, one of the top 20 in the country and then now 15 sacks over the last three games with Zach Wilson starting. Why do you think the breakdown is happening over the last three? Well, I mean, I, I, as you look at it, I think it comes down to a couple things. Number one is um, the assignments, missed assignments from our front, from the O-line. Uh, and then, um, you know, we've got to get open downfield. And Zach needs a, between all this and then Zach being able to be smart with the football and throwing it away or going to the check down. There's, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, but we need to improve on that. That's one thing that needs to get better is, is um, the amount of sacks that happens, but also, you know, scoring in the red zone. And, and we've been good all year until the last couple of weeks has been, it's been an issue. And so with that many trips down the red zone, I like Scott or Southam kicking field goals because I trust him. But uh, we'd rather score touchdowns and let him kick PATs. As a reminder, your game stats that you're seeing on BYU Football with Kalani Satake are presented by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. I saw a lot of winning numbers here in the statistics, specifically defensively. Also, your offense put up 61 more yards against Boise on their home turf. That does not happen often to a Broncos team. So while you see a lot of winning numbers, what do you, why do you feel like it's, it's not translating ultimately into the win just yet? Uh, we just got to get over the hump of, of, of shooting ourselves in the foot, you know, and um, capitalizing on, on big plays and that 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 needs to be uh, an issue for us. It needs to be something that we need to work on this week and practice and play better in the red zone and 
you know, um, last week, the week before this game, the Boise game, the NIU game, it was more about getting momentum and, and being consistent. And now it's shifted to finishing the drives, you know. And so uh, I think every week, I, if I could go back, I was like, let's just win the game, however it can be. And, and, and I think we're making steps and making some progress, but uh, we really want to win. You know, I, I've been really pleased with the way the defense is playing. And um, for the most part, the special teams have been good. We've made some mistakes. Uh, this week uh, on all three phases, and this is a team game. And um, so, uh, unfortunately, in, in Boise, there's too many mistakes to be made where you couldn't just come away with the win. And uh, that's one thing that's really difficult, but we got to learn from it and progress and, and grow. And I think as a team, as a program, I mean, we're in the locker room, and the guys are really hungry for the next game. And they're really disappointed because we're a lot better than what we've been playing. Uh, they felt like the whole entire season, and that's, that's my job is to get the most out of them and make sure that we do it on the, on the days that matter the most, which is on Saturday. Through nine games, BYU at four and five overall, and working to get back to 500 with a win at UMass this Saturday. Coach, you've experienced, as you mentioned, close, frustrating losses in back-to-back -back weeks. That's hard to let it settle, but you got to move on. So what, what's the key to getting over that and picking up a win against a team that beat you in Pro Bowl last year? Maybe you motivate your team with uh, reminding them about that a time or a thousand. Yeah, just another opportunity for us to go and play and, and uh, the, to improve, but... Um, just to play a, a good, complete 60 minutes of BYU football. And, um, you know, we've been talking about being consistent all year long, and this is an opportunity for us to go against UMass, a team that beat us last year. And, um, you know, a, a lot of the guys on the team remember that. And so it's a, a, a place back in the East Coast, and the game's going to kick off around 10 a.m. here in Utah. In Utah. So uh, our guys, we have to adjust to the clock, and there's a lot of things that can distract you. So our guys need to be on top of it. and, and so far in the week of preparation, I haven't really been concerned with how they prepare because the guys work hard during the week, and it's just a matter of putting it all together on Saturday. That, that's what it comes down to. That's what I get paid to do. <laughs> We're just getting started. <laughs> Another friendly reminder for your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. Watch BYU Sports Nation with myself and my co-host, Jerem Jordan, weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, the keys to beating UMass and slowing down their star receiver who just gave BYU 300 plus reasons for concern after his most recent performance. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV, to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Well, I did it again. Perfect dinner, weird toy for Kate. Even Nana's happy and Nana hates everything. Oh, and I earned triple rewards while doing it. <laughs> Time to treat myself. Visa Triple Rewards from Mountain America on all purchases through December 31st. Don't worry, Dad. Mama's got rewards. Be a holiday hero with Visa Triple Rewards from Mountain America. Everybody enjoys a little prank from time to time. Add a little magic to the prank and things get even more interesting. What? That is insane. This season, I'm teaming up with families to prank siblings, friends, parents, and their kids. What? You're on TV right now. I'm Eric LeClaire, and it's time for a little mischief. This is why you brought me here? Uh... <laughs> Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Watch BYU take on UVU live Friday at 10 Eastern, 8 Mountain on BYU TV. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar sports. Bruh, I ain't got no chill. The BYU TV sports countdown to kickoff. BYU at UMass, 11 a.m. Eastern, 9 Mountain, Saturday on BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, Healing for Life, and by Nissan, Innovation That Excites.
BYU football with Kalani Satake continues on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Here's a look at the Saturday game day schedule. Cougar pregame live on BYU Radio starts bright and early, 10 a.m. Eastern time with BYU TV's countdown to kickoff beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern time. The game kicks at noon on 11 sports, also right here on BYU TV and BYU Radio with full postgame coverage on both entities after the game. BYU currently in the midst of a four-game contract with UMass. This year marks the third of four meetings between the Cougars and Minutemen. First road trip to Foxborough. Coach, what sticks out about this UMass Minutemen team version 2018? Well, they score a lot of points on offense, and um, defensively, they take a lot of risks. They'll, they'll pressure. It's what they did to us last year, and uh, pressure up front and, and try to stop the run game. So um, they'll, they'll dare you in the passing game, and then we have to be able to capitalize on it like other teams have done. So um, they had a big game, big win last year, last week against Liberty, 62 to 59. <laughs> and so they scored a lot of points and defensively we got to be ready because they have some dynamic players on their offense. And, um, you know, offensively we have to take care of the football and march down the field and, and punch it in the end zone when, it, when it's time to do that. Yeah, the Minutemen have one of the most prolific receivers in the entire FBS. His name is Andy Isabella. He went for over 100 yards against the Cougars last year. But honestly speaking, that's beans compared to the 303 receiving yards he just put up against Liberty. How do you slow down one of the most productive receivers in collegiate football? Well, as you can see from the highlights, they find different ways to get him the ball, uh, whether it's throwing quick screen or a fly sweep or or just um, doing double moves or getting the ball on a drag route, throwing it deep. He's got a lot of, tar he gets a lot of targets. He, he's got like 77 receptions on the year and I think second to him is at, at 22. So um, I think he's a favorite re receiver for the team. So we have to be able to defend him and uh, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna make some yards. He did last year against us out of defensively. We did a pretty good job defending them, but uh, we have to be able to, where he makes people miss is where he can really, cost the teams that he'll catch a screen and turn it into an 80 yard touchdown. He did that against South Florida and other teams. He's made a lot of moves and and he's shifty. And so uh, we have to really be a Simon sound and, and focus on our fundamentals and make sure that we tackle him well. As su successful as the UMass offense has been at times this year, their defense has produced notoriously bad numbers. So what kind of offensive opportunity do you think awaits for your true freshman quarterback Zach Wilson uh, in his next start? Well, I'm not really concerned about their defense as much as I am about their star offense clicking on all cylinders and focusing on what we do best and uh, what we can't have are mistakes that, that happened last week and the week before, you know, with um, the mental mistakes. And if that means that we have to keep it even more simple so that our guys don't uh, make mistakes and we can just at least, it doesn't really matter if UMass knows the play, we need to know our assignments and make sure that we, we get it done right. So uh, that's going to be the key for us. Uh, we respect them. Uh, def defensively, they take a lot of risks. They'll, they'll put a lot of guys in the box and the pressure and their blitz uh, quite a bit. And, and the first thought is that, well, if they're going to do that, then we'll just throw it against zero coverage downfield. And some teams do that. And uh, other teams, uh, you know, just keep, keep grinding away. So for us, we need to be able to do both. And if, if they're going to be committed to stopping the run, then we need to throw the ball and, and vice versa. They're going to put people in coverage and we need to be able to run. Do you feel like you're getting back to more of the BYU football of old that you have referenced a few times over the past few years? I just like to win, and that's what that's what the that's what BYU does, and then that's what we need to do this week. And I, I'm not really concerned about the stats. I, I'd like to see a lot of the explosive plays from our offense. If that means throwing the ball downfield a lot, then let's do it. You know, and I mentioned being aggressive. You'll never you hear me complain about you know going big every time and and and, and taking shots downfield. And, so if, if the head coach is saying that, then there's really no repercussions. <laughs> right? I'm the guy that went for it on fourth and 19 on fi uh, an ugly fake punt. So uh, I'm just basically saying just I'm daring the coaches to be as aggressive as possible and see what happens. So we'll, we'll see. Um, it's their job to be able to, you know, pull the reins if they need to. But I'm just saying let it go and, and let, the, let the freshman quarterback just sling it. All right. Much more to come with uh, the head coach, Kalani Satake. Check out BYU Sports Nation right now with Kiki Solano. It's the latest in Cougar sports with a social media twist. Right now on the BYU Sports Nation Twitter, Facebook, IGTV, and YouTube accounts. As we head to break, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner, Monday through Wednesday. 
a kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the Residence in Marriott in Provo. Right after the break, the coach takes your questions in studio and from social media. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. I volunteer at Primary Children's Hospital because I care about helping families with sick kids. I volunteer at the 512 Foundation because I care about our kids and community. And I volunteer because I care about Utah's future engineers. Do you know someone who cares about making our community better? I Am Flash will recognize your unsung hero and donate $1,000 to their favorite local charity. IamFlash.com slash hero. I care about making the world a happier place. And App Envy. Watch BYU Sports Nation on BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. I didn't think that would go public. Next time on the Story Trek reunion episode, I'm back in the Palmetto State. <laughs> Years ago, I met the happiest lady in town with a heart wrenching story. The hardest thing I have faced, and hope I never have to face it again. But what happens when she loses the love of her life? I don't know where I'm going to stay tonight. I don't. How a talented musician ended up living on the streets. Join me from South Carolina tonight on The Story Trek. I'm Jerem Jordan from BYU Sports Nation. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake. This is our Cougars in the NFL update. New England Patriots linebacker Kyle Van Noy had a team high nine tackles in a 31-17 win against Jamal Williams and the Green Bay Packers, who contributed seven rushes for 34 yards. He also caught two passes for 20. Taysom Hill and the Saints are seven and one after a win against the previously unbeaten LA Rams. Hill rushed for 10 yards, had 49 kickoff return yards. 49ers rookie Fred Warner recorded seven tackles in a 34-3 win against the Raiders. And the Lions, Ziggy Ansah, after sitting out eight weeks back from injury, he had a sack in a loss to the Minnesota Vikings. Coach, several of your guys making a significant impact for their respective teams. What do you think about that, uh, that rundown we just showed oh, that's you? That's great. I mean, we've got to get more guys in the NFL. That's because they'll do a good job there. And it was nice we had Steve Young came to practice last week, and, and um, we're looking forward to seeing, uh, seeing Kyle Van Noy when we get to Boston. And, and so it's going to be nice to have those guys around our guys. And, you know, Fred's always keeping in touch. So our NFL guys always have a great connection with our program. But more importantly, they're connected to our players, and they're giving them great advice. So it's, it's nice to see them doing well. All right, use hashtag Satake Show on Twitter and comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A session, which begins right now here in Studio C. And uh, I believe studio question number one is from Brenton Farrell. Hey, Spencer. Always a pleasure. Uh, Coach, I had a question about just your love of the game of football. Which do you enjoy more, the joy of playing football or the mental strategy and, I guess, joy as well of coaching football? I loved it all. I mean, I, I think when I was a fan growing up, I remember being at Cougar Stadium and watching the, the, the boys play, watching Ty and Steve Young and all those guys make plays. I, I had so much fun doing that, but and I got to play, and I, I enjoyed doing that too, and now I'm coaching. I get to be around great fans and, and the, the best young men in, in football, you know, so... I like it all. I just think that my memory's fading because I'm older now, so probably like coaching better. I don't, I don't, I mean, I, someone will show me a clip of what I did back in the day and I'll forget that I did that. I was like, oh, that's, that's how old I'm getting. But I'm really enjoying my moment right now and being head coach and being uh, involved with the fans and especially with the players. 
All right, thanks, Brenton. Uh, now a social media question. This is from Brian Lewis on Facebook. He asks, Coach, with so many freshmen earning playing time, what does that say about our upperclassmen talent, and how are they handling it? Is there any division? No. I mean, if you look at one example is Tanner Mangum, and you see the way he reacted when Zach was a starter, that he was just there to support him, you know. And so um, the, the, the guys, the upperclassmen that are, that are not on the field, a lot of reasons. One is because of the competition that we have on our team. Guys earn the right to get on the field. But uh, most of it has to do with um, injuries, guys that are banged up. And so what we won't do is just keep playing a guy that's, that's banged up and injured when there's a, a guy, young, um, whether he's younger or the same year, um, that, that has earned the right to be on the field. So that's the hardest part is that you, you, as you start working with guys as you're going through injuries, uh, when someone's banged up and you keep playing them, you, you can really hurt their life. Uh, they'll compensate for the injury and hurt something else, and then they're in a string of injuries, and, and then you set them down the path of, of a lot of difficulty. You know? So my job as a head coach is to keep our guys safe, even from themselves, because you ask a 20-year-old, they'll, they'll, they'll choose to play every time. They don't think about themselves being in their 40s and older and, and having a, a hard time moving around. So um, with the competition and with dealing with, with some guys that are injured and banged up, um, that's, that's how it works. But if you look at the upperclassmen on our team, they've been, they've been always supportive of what we're doing on the field. And you see the guys that are on the field, they're, they're the biggest mentors and supporters for those guys. So uh, it's one thing that I've really been pleased about with our seniors and our juniors um, buying into the program, buying into the culture. All right, another question in this time from Instagram. Justin McClellan asks, with one touchdown scored the last two games, what's the plan to find the end zone more often? Yeah, and when you get the first get to the red zone, and when you get there, put it in the end zone, you know. So that's, um, and then do whatever it takes to win. And so, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing our offense uh, march down the field and, and punch it in the end zone. I think once we get that momentum going, then it's going to be really hard to stop us because we've seen it. We've seen it in, 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 in flashes, and it's just putting it together back to back to back. And I can't wait to see them roll in, 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 in you know, at, in Boston and. Uh, I know we have the talent, we have the scheme, and we have the, the guys' uh, the ability to make it work, and it's just a matter of, of having it finally come together. And uh, it's, it's now's the time on Saturday. I was really hoping you'd give us your entire play call sheet and just <laughs> throw it out there. Yeah, just throw it to the open guy <laughs> and block for the guy that's running the ball. So we do that and then get, get it past the line with the pylons and we'll be okay. It's yeah. a simple game, right? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I just learned that. Re no, I'm joking. No, it's, I mean... It's a frustrating game. Like I said, it's an, it's an odd-shaped ball, and it bounces different ways. And uh, There's a lot of th variables that go into it, and we're trying to keep it as consistent and constant as possible so that we can have more production and more success. And I have great young men that, that are willing to work hard and buy into what we're, what we're asking them to do. And so it's, it's our job to put them in, as coaches to put them in the position that they can have success. All right, Bruce Williams on Facebook is asking specifically, What's the latest with Lopini Katoa, his health and uh, his immediate future? Uh, he's, he's been banged up. I mean, I think a lot of guys are banged up right now, you know, but he's still on the field and practicing. And, um, and depending on how he competes this week, it, we'll see how many reps he gets. That's how it works. All right. Much more to come from the coach as he answers more of your questions, also the Albacri brothers. Reminder, Wednesdays at 8 Eastern on BYU Radio, get better acquainted with the Cougars, past and present on Behind the Mic, a weekly hour of in-depth conversation with Greg Rubel. Tomorrow's guests include former NBA forward and current BYU women's basketball head coach, Jeff Judkins, plus former All-Pro NFL punter, Lee Johnson, who is a hoot. Great lineup, Wednesdays, 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. Up next. The brothers El Bakri, Braden and Bracken, will join us in Studio C. Who would win an arm wrestling competition between those two? Maybe we should find out. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success. 
demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. I feel like giving out some compliments. Well, here they are, my favorite customers of the day, and beautiful. You're on a show called Random Acts. It's show. Everybody appreciates you and loves you. You guys are awesome. And take the vehicles up to Park City while there's still light to do the reveal. I can't say enough. That's super. And this is a, out of control. One, two, three, random I feel like we're home right here. Nicholson's kickoff is returnable. Justice Ongafa to try the 10-yard line. Whoa, oh, he's perfect. somersaulted by Braden L. Bakri <laughs> at the 15-yard line. He is straight tea-kettled. <laughs> wow. He was such a missile and went right for his ankles. He only had a shot to try and get him low. And, man, it was head over tea-kettle. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sataki on BYU TV and BYU Radio, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. We're ready for our first player guest of the night. Just saw him in that highlight. Senior fullback and special teams extraordinaire, a man who scored the first touchdown, no kidding, in the Kalani Sataki head coaching era. His name is Braden L. Bakri. Welcome, Braden. Thanks, man. The fans are happy to have you here, obviously, and uh, enjoying... One of your uh, handful of amazing special teams moments that you've had as a BYU football player. Uh, we'll get into some of those big tackles in just a minute, but let's, let's get to know you a little bit. Uh, and I'm sure that you've been asked this question a bunch since you showed up at BYU, but still there are those out there that, that aren't sure. Where, where does the name El Bakri come from? Uh, the name El Bakri comes from my dad's side, his dad, through adoption. So, but the name El Bakri itself is translated from Arabic. So it's kind of like a unique thing. It makes us stand out when you hear it. You're like, oh, Bakri, what is that? But, yeah, it's a cool story, and I'm proud to bear the name. Now, you went uh, from walk-on to earning a scholarship at BYU. Let's rewind to the moment you found out that you were going to go on full scholarship. Where were you? What was that like? Take us back there. Um, I was in New York. We were at the top of the, uh, the skyscraper up there. And, you know, Kalani just came over to me as we were about to go down the elevator, put his arm around me, and was like, hey, bro, we got you a scholarship. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> now I got to go down this skyscraper <laughs> in, in an elevator and not be able to celebrate right now. But, it, yeah, it was really cool. Fantastic. Well, not everybody finds out they got a scholarship in New York City at the top of a skyscraper. Did you plan this strategically, Kalani? No, it was just right when I found out I had to tell them. I couldn't keep it secret. So <laughs> it was just we were there doing a, a charity event and, Work, doing some service project stuff in, in Harlem, you know. And yeah, just I, I saw him and had to tell him right away. You literally were on top of the world, Braden. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Waiting for an elevator. Figuratively, literally on top of the world. Great story. Uh, okay, now to some of the big tackles on kickoffs. Uh, what is your favorite moment that you've had as a special teams player at BYU? Wow, favorite moment that I've had. Um, probably the very first kickoff that I got to run down Mississippi, uh, Michigan State was my favorite because, I mean, Coach Lamb threw me in there and he was just like, let's see if he can get it. And I, I was able to get the tackle right then and there. And then my second favorite's gotta be San Jose State because, I mean, just the adrenaline of that hit, getting the ball, running off the field, coming right to him, giving him a big hug and whatnot, it was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, it's hard to argue against the San Jose State one, but here's another look at uh, what you did against Hawaii this year. The, the tea kettle play, apparently. The tea right? kettle, all right. I yeah, are you cool with that? Yeah, that's a great nickname. Very cool. All right, Kalani, uh, what do you think of Braden Albacri, not just as a special teams player, but as a football player in general? Oh, I love him. I mean, I, you know, I'm a former fullback, and so I'm always going to be biased towards the fullbacks, but 
Um, I'm glad that he got the first touchdown in, when I was a head coach. But uh, I've just been really pleased with him and how he handles his business in so many ways. You know, you, if you get to, you see the stuff that he does as a football player is really nice. We get to see him as a brother and as a teammate and a leader, husband. You know, he's such a good person and good, a good son. You get to know the whole family and, and um, just honored to be his coach. But he's a guy that loves football. He has so much passion for the game. And I, I've, sh sh you know, shook hands with a lot of the former, you know, when we were ending, at the end of the game, with coaches and, and players that always come up to me and they say, hey, where's 35? I want to meet him. And coaches just love him. And so scouts talk about all, all the things that he does on special teams. He's, he's got a unique talent, being the, one of the biggest guys, but always finding a way to be the first one downfield. It's weird. You know, but uh, has a lot more speed than I ever did. But uh, <laughs> he just f he finds a way to make plays, and, and uh, he's just a big time team. He's a team guy, so just uh, if I could have a hundred of them, I'll take them. The tea kettle missile, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. Coach Lamb gave him the nickname today, Big Cat, because this last game against Boise, he made it. I don't know how he made the tackle, but he had to twist his body to make it, and, and it's just amazing. Big guys aren't supposed to be like that. They're supposed to be. <laughs> Stiff and fat like me. <laughs> <laughs> Braden, uh, I saw you before the Wisconsin game and, and found out you weren't going to play there. And I know that was a devastating feeling for you because you do love football so much. Mm -hmm. um, but also heard that you're feeling better than you have in a long time. So how, how is your health right now in relation to football and, and playing moving forward? I mean, if it was up to me, I would never sit out anything, even if my arm was falling off. To but... your point, coach. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I had to save him from himself so many times in the last three years, because he'll, he'll, it doesn't matter. We had to take his helmet away and his pads because he was just going to suit up anyways. I, I just had a feeling that he was going to sneak his way onto the field. <laughs> I would have tried. And, and so we have to, we have to keep his, his equipment away from him, because that's, the guy's crazy. He wants to be on the field. It's a fun game. You only get so long to play. Yeah, but uh, uh, going back to the initial point, you're, you feeling pretty good? Yeah, I'm feeling great now, so. All right, that's All great good. news. Yeah. That's great news. And Braden Elbacker's healthy. Things are good. <laughs> uh, the men's basketball team, by the way, uh, in the midst of football season, opens their regular season tonight at number seven, Nevada. A top ten showdown. Listen live on BYU Radio at 11 Eastern, 9 Mountain, pregame at 10 Eastern with Greg Rebell. Then Friday, the Cougars host Mark Pope and the Utah Valley Wolverines. That game tipping off at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Just like that, basketball is back as well. If you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, try Smith's Click List. Order online, pick up curbside at the store, visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for all of those details. After the break, Braden's brother, defensive lineman, Bracken L. Backery. Plus your questions for the head coach from the audience and social media. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. No matter what stage you're at in life, you're always looking to take the next step forward. At Deseret First Credit Union, we want to take each and every next step with you. With low auto loan rates, you can be ready to see what's around every new corner. And amazing rates on home mortgages, so you can move up to something you've always dreamed of. Deseret First Credit Union, with you every financial step of the way. Membership and eligibility required. Equal housing lender. Have a car wreck? Martin's Collision Repair. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martin's Collision Repair. Hey, Lauren. Oh, hey, Smith. So who's your favorite athlete growing up? I know it's going to sound super cliche. Ty Detmer was the man. I'm not kidding you. I wanted to be Ty Detmer. To the point where, like, he had, like, this specific little drop back he did. Like, when he took a step back, he'd, like, bob the ball a little bit. Like, I was doing that as a nine-year-old. I was like, I got to be Ty Detmer. That's probably why I choose him as, like, the athlete I looked up to most when I was a little kid. And I still look up to him now because he's a good person. I ain't got no chill.
BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Welcome back. As a reminder, use hashtag Satake Show on Twitter and comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A sessions coming up. Let's go ahead and bring one more guest to the party, shall we? A sophomore defensive lineman with 15 tackles this season and the younger brother to our first player guest, Braden. Welcome, Bracken El Bakri. <laughs> a solid salute, man. How you feeling tonight? Pretty good. A little bit nervous, but good. You know? Okay, well, it's not like it's live TV or anything, so you're good. Oh, it's not live? No, it's live. Oh, it is live? <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to put you on the spot on live TV and live radio. Uh, what was it like growing up with Braden? Man, it was awesome. It was the best. We've, we've been best friends ever since, you know, I was born and was in diapers. He actually named me, which is crazy. Well, he helped name me. He couldn't say my name, so then they just changed my name to what he could say. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, it was great, dude. We've, we always had someone to, to play with, and he always had someone to be the bad guy for him when he was the good guy. So, As you uh, look at some pictures now that we're uh, putting out uh, across the airwaves, um, what goes through your mind when you see yourself standing next to your brother? I'm just thinking those are some good times. Those are good times, you know? Really fun. Okay, I learned something during the break. And, and your family's in, in the studio here tonight. Mom and dad, little mm -hmm. sister. Uh, Braden, you brought up the fact that the, uh, the hit against San Jose State happened on your dad's birthday. Mm -hmm. So did you find him in the crowd somehow and wish him happy birthday? That, that was for you? Yeah, How'd told, that go down? I told him before the game, I was like, hey, happy birthday. I, I hope I do something you know, spectacular for you. So just right place, right time, and it ended up happening. Yeah, I think that qualifies. Okay. Now to the real brother things. Um, who would win an arm wrestling contest right now between both of you? Oof. Probably the older brother. Because, well, or know. the bigger brother, maybe. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I, I wish we could line it up right here. But we, we got too many. We've got too much stuff Bring to do. Bring out the table, Yeah, baby. we'll have to save that for social media. Yeah. Maybe we'll get that on our Facebook and Instagram accounts. Kalani, you want to get it on the arm wrestling as well? No, those days are gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, These two are way better. Okay. Uh, playing against each other in fall camp, defense and offense. What was that dynamic like? I thought it was kind of cool, you know, because we see each other all day. I live with him and his wife, and so in the mornings we're, like, talking about it. We've been going through film, and we're like, dude, I totally got you right. You did not get me. I, you didn't even make the tackle. Yeah, but I would have. would have come over here, <laughs> smacked you. Like, you didn't smack me. Look at my head right here. You know what I mean? It's really fun. It's just it's a kind of a constant, like, Go back and forth. We compete in everything, and so it's really fun. All right, Braden, you want to have your say in this and then how that dynamic was uh, during fall camp? I mean, it's kind of hard. As a fullback, you don't block the D tackle very often. But, you know, the times that we did, I clearly won almost every <laughs> single time. But, you know, when is a I let him, term, I let him I have the satisfaction, you know, of not ending up on the ground, you know, because I'm an older brother, make sure he feels good. And, but, I see him and, limping around the house, you know, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Again. <laughs> Go easier. <next> time. <laughs> no, but it, it's fun. It's awesome. Bracken, I understand you had quite the diet last summer. Um, walk us through the details of that, trying to, to beef up for the defensive line. Yeah, I knew. I, I, I met with Coach Tuyaki, and he just told me, like, you know, we need you to be two, 285, 290. And I wasn't even close to that. I was like 260, you know, around there. So I'm like, okay, 290, I got to get there. So I got these protein shakes, these super mass protein shakes for like 2,000 calories. <laughs> And if you use half and half, it's even more. <laughs> but, dude, they're thick. They're thick things. So I planned those out, two or three of those a day. And then Braden, thankfully, cooked me lots of food and, and was always on me, like, dude, you got to eat. Or, like, it'd be late at night, and we've already lifted two or three times. Like, we got to, let's hit up Vasa. And I'm like, dude, it's 1130. Like, we're going, and you're taking a shake after. <laughs> so, but kind of the craziest thing was I, was I was gaining weight, but I wasn't gaining as fast as I wanted to. So I started setting an alarm at night about 2.30 because that's when I felt like I was losing the weight. And I'd put, I'd put the shake stuff in there and I'd just be ready. So I'd just wake up and like zombie over there and just <laughs> and drink it and then just fall over wherever I was. <laughs> Food come and sleep Did it, it work? Did it work It for worked. You? It worked. I've, I feel like I've kind of figured it out. I can kind of change my body weight to be wherever he wants me to be. In, wow. in fall camp, the, Coach Fiaki was like, you know, we... I, we really like you then, so maybe maybe let's drop 10 pounds. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. Started the next day, like 
cutting weight. I'm like eating vegetables and stuff. And then, and then the next day he's like, actually, we want you to be t t t t I'm like, back to the Hershey bars. Like, all right, I like this one even better. So I feel like I can adjust it. That's really, really funny. How many calories a day? Just out of curiosity. I, I don't know the exact number just because you have like a chicken breast and you don't know what that is or like 12 eggs and who knows how many oh, calories just 12, 12 eggs. eggs are. <laughs> but probably somewhere around 8,000. Okay. Hey, does anybody else want to get on the 8,000 calorie diet? <laughs> yeah, Bracken can uh, give you the insight into that. That's really funny. Okay, um, not really sure where to go after 8,000 calories a day. <laughs> Still uh, processing that for sure. Um, but let's go to this, the actual football. You have an opportunity to go across the country, both of you, and play in Boston in an NFL stadium where the Patriots play in Foxborough against UMass, a team that beat BYU last year. What do you think about the matchup with UMass? We'll start with you first, Bracken. Uh, I mean, I think we match up really well. We have a fantastic football team. We match up great against, against anybody. But uh, Coach is really good at putting in the personnel. I think Coach Toyaki and Coach Sataki make great schemes for each team we've played. You guys saw our Wisconsin game. You saw our Hawaii game. I mean, those were two totally different fronts because they're really great at scheming it out, and I think we have a fantastic opportunity to come out and stop what they're good at and, and show them what we can do. Braden, what do you think of UMass? Um, I really like some of the stuff they do. They play hard under 4-3, which I think we match up well against. Um, their Mike linebacker, number 44, he's kind of the heart of their defense. we got to be able to get double teams up to him and be able to get the, the surge off the line of scrimmage if we want to control this game. Uh, but I'm really excited. I feel like we owe them a little extra from last year. It was kind of a lull game for us, and it kind of hurt, honestly. And I'm just excited to get back out there and play them again. Yeah, and I know you as a senior, you want to help your team get back to a bowl game. This would be a big step uh, in doing that. All right, we're not done yet, so don't go anywhere. This is way yeah. too much fun. Mondays at 1 Eastern, we talk with the BYU football coordinators on Coordinator's Corner, featuring Jeff Grimes, Elisa Tuiaki, and Ed Lamb. It's Mondays at 1 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. After the short break, the latest edition of the Play Club. And it goes down to the wire as BYU football with Kalani Satake continues. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. From here, all roads lead directly to your relatives. Nice to meet you. I'm your cousin. I'm your great aunt. I'm your father's cousin. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to tell you everything. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> so to actually hear his voice for the first time was really, really cool. I have been looking for you your whole life. I really have. Now I can start filling those pages in with, with, with a beautiful family. It just changes your perspective on why we're doing this. They didn't forget about me. They really remember us. It, it was hard for them. Family. To family. To family. sing or dance, dance, beach or mountains, beach, favorite TV show, Riverdale, favorite non-football hobby, 
Go to the movies, favorite athlete, Jamal Adams, biggest fear, heights, favorite superhero, Superman, Michael Jordan, LeBron, favorite coach, Preston Hadley. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sataki on BYU TV and BYU Radio, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. It's time for the El Bakri brothers and Coach Sataki to address questions from members across Cougar Nation for a bit. And uh, we're going to start here in the live audience, if that's okay. Actually, we're going to go to social media. I'm audibling. Is that okay? Call the Red! Yeah. Red! <laughs> yes, okay. Orange Orange barrel. Barrel. Orange yes, barrel. yes, Orange Barrel, whatever that means. Um, let's go uh, this one from at Tanner Lewis 11. This is for Braden. What's Zach Wilson like in the huddle? Um, he's very confident. He comes in and he's just like, let's go, guys. We're going to get it. And I, I really like the confidence that he brings to the huddle. All right. Uh, this is a question in for uh, also for Braden. Uh, Mary Bunn asks on Facebook, are you ever afraid of injuring a kick returner? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they lift and work out in the offseason. They're perfectly capable of staying healthy. Okay. Uh, let's get this one to Bracken from Sean Mickelson. How does your diet affect your performance when you're in season? Uh, w to answer that question, I'd say that the diet all has to come before the season. It's kind of hard to – you got to keep your weight up. But if you haven't done it then, then when it comes time to be in the game and you're just not heavy enough or you're just too heavy, you're not going to be able to play your best. Okay. So, so now, you know how to joke around, but when it comes down to it, you, you know the drill, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, for both brothers, from Alex underscore Akagi on Instagram, what's the best experience you've both had playing for BYU? Bracken, you answer first. Oh, the best experience was going onto the field in Wisconsin when they were trying to drive to go win the game. You know what I mean? It was third down. Oh, you could just feel the heartbeat of the game. Just, poof. And just looking at that tackle, and I just barely done, done a swim move. And so he was thinking I was going to just rush up field, and I just, just hit him so hard and tried to jump over him, and the quarterback threw it away. And I think that's the best, well, probably one of the best feelings of the whole, my whole life, just feeling the heartbeat of the game. Just it was awesome. I was terrified just then <laughs> as we were reliving that. That's a pretty accurate uh, reenactment of that whole thing. Woo. Okay. Braden, your favorite moment playing for BYU football. Maybe it was uh, what you mentioned earlier, but we'll give you another opportunity to answer that. No, I think my favorite moment, moment playing BYU football was when he was at fullback and I was a tailback, and we got to score a touchdown together. That was one of the best moments ever. Okay. You know, something you guys probably don't know about that was during the week, Braden's like, hey, we're going to score on this play. He's like, we got to have a secret handshake ready because <laughs> the camera's going to be on us. And we practiced it like four times, you know. We're going to do this, and we're going to do this. And, and right as we scored, I just whoosh, forgot all about it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, dude, we have, we're having a secret handshake. <laughs> God, I forgot all about the secret handshake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Coach, I need you to chime in here. So Brayton's married. Bracken, Bracken is not. Um, so how, how can we help Bracken <laughs> find his soulmate? Well, we're, we're taking it to the, to the airwaves and hoping that uh, through, <laughs> through TV that you can see there's a special someone out there for Bracken <laughs> with the same amount of energy that can match it. And uh, he's, he's one of the, the true characters on our team, and he's like this all the time. He really is. So I, I don't know how the Albacris did it during sacrament meeting, <laughs> but um, I can only imagine. But I love having him on the team. This, these two guys are, are some of the most um, positive guys I've ever been around. And, and so the passion that they have for the game is awesome, but they just love being alive, you know. And I, I got to play uh, here at BYU with my little brother and who I was better than, you know. But um, <laughs> we had a lot of fun, and, and those moments are just, uh, they're precious. So I, I know that the... We have a good, a good number set of brothers on our team, and we want to keep this thing rolling, and we want to see the El Bakris keep going, so we want to get to a bowl game, and, and that starts by getting this, this win this weekend. Okay, here is uh, the final social media question. In from Matthew Loveland on Facebook. This is for Bracken. What's your favorite pregame tradition? Favorite pregame tradition? Yeah. Uh, okay, let me think about that for a second. Okay, I really, I know this is going to sound weird, but, like, you know, we're, like, there... I'm drinking a bunch of pre-workout and I'm waiting for it to hit, like, because you can feel it hit all at the same time. 
And I'm like sitting there and we're like waiting for it to hit. And right as it hits, you just like, you just feel it all hit you. And you're about to go out. And right then I say a little prayer and I'm like, you know, right when you're feeling all the energy, I'm just like, Lord, please help me and my brother. And that's my favorite thing because I just feel all this energy and right, it's like, Connect with heaven, right? As your body's like, <laughs> like, I don't know if you've ever seen Avatar or like Dragon Ball, but that's what it the feels connection. like. Right as you feel the energy hit you, you're like, oh! and then heaven just, <laughs> you just connect with heaven and yourself, and just, that's the best. Then you're ready to go. I'd like to thank your parents for bringing Bracken El Bakri into this world. Thank, thank you. Thank you. We're all better people for having heard what he just said. <laughs> that's, that's pretty specific, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bray, Brayden, do you have a favorite pregame tradition? Do, get, I, I, do I dare ask? <laughs> just to show you our personalities, I mean, that's his pregame. I like to lay there on the floor and listen to music until they call us out into the tunnel. So, I mean, it's just, you know, fire, ice. Okay. <laughs> Sums it up beautifully. Very good. Mark your calendars, everyone, including you guys, for this Thursday night when number one ranked and undefeated BYU women's volleyball host Santa Clara. Trying to get to 24-0 this season, the Cougars are the lone unbeaten team in America out of 330 Division I teams. The view from the top is nice. We're back with a final thought from the coach and your Saturday football schedule. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. for a special, special sketch that uh, you guys might be seeing. It's a fun character that might be coming back. I don't want to say too much, but just know it's going to be Bala. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU Santa Clara women's volleyball game. Thursday at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar Sports. Bruh, I got no chill. The BYU TV Sports Post Game. BYU at UMass. Saturday after the game. One more look at the Saturday game day schedule. Cougar pregame live on BYU Radio starts bright and early, 10 a.m. Eastern time with BYU TV's countdown to kickoff beginning at 11 a.m. The game kicks at noon Eastern on 11 Sports and right here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Full postgame coverage on both after the game. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake presented in part by Smith's Low Prices, Market Fresh at Smith's. Kalani, let's finish uh, with this question. How do you overcome the oft-discussed challenge of going across the country, two time zones, early start time, when in the past it hasn't typically been super friendly to BYU? How, how do you overcome that? Well, we're leaving a day earlier than we normally would. So whenever you go away two time zones, you, you try to, um, we'll leave on Thursday around 3 o'clock, land around 9, and try to get our guys to sleep and then wake them up early on Friday. And that way we have two nights in, in Boston to get, get a, uh, acclimated to the to time change and then uh, be ready to go. You know, I, I think uh, we'll wake up Saturday morning, eat pregame meal, which will be breakfast. Uh, make sure that everybody's ready to go and get on the buses 9:30 and be at the stadium two hours before the game and get ready to roll. So our guys are ready. Are, I mean, it, it's nice that the game's coming at noon and they'll be ready to roll. And I like the prep so far, and I just I think our guys are ready to explode. 
All right, we cannot wait. Let's go. Coach, always great to have you with us. Thank you so yes, much for your time. Good to have you. All right, we'll talk to you all next Tuesday, 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain, for the BYU football brothers, Braden and Brackenell Battery, and the head coach, Kalani Satake. I am Spencer Linton. This has been BYU Football with Kalani Satake. So long from Studio C. Run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, sunshine.